For more on the recall election, let's bring, bring in our political panel, founder of the Center for American Liberty and RNC committee woman for California, Harmi Dillon, and American radio show host and Fox News contributor Richard Fowler. Welcome to both of you. Good to see you, Mike. Happy to be here. Harmi, you're there in California. How engaged are folks there in this recall election? Well, I think people are pretty upset across the political spectrum about the abysmal situation we have here in California. You heard Larry Elder mention some of the main reasons, but for decades now, uh, Democrats have been controlling California and failing California. For the first time ever, we are losing a congressional seat in California because so many people are moving out of California. So this is really a referendum on the leadership of California. The uh, recall effort had nonpartisan and bipartisan support, and this is a final chance for Californians to take back our state. So we are looking at record good turnout. Uh, over 8 million, uh, close to 8 million people have voted already, which is more than the populations of most of our United States. So people are pretty energized, and we are still in the home stretch here. You're going to see a surge of voters voting on Election Day, people who don't like to vote by mail. And we're going to see, uh, I think, record turnout here for a recall election. Interesting. Some prominent Democrats are heading to the Golden State to help Governor Newsom in the final hours. Is that a sign of Democratic unity, Richard, or concern about the possibility of an embarrassing defeat? Oh, I think it's a sign of Democratic unity, uh, and here's the reason why. Not only do you see Democrats showing up to vote early in this um, recall election, but I think you also have what you also see happening is a lot of folks, this sort of the, the this sort of secret majority, right? This secret majority of the vaccinated. All these folks who are now vaccinated in California, who want to go on to live their lives in California, are saying to themselves. If we vote for Larry Elder, will this state go backwards, given the fact that we are now dealing with the Delta variant that's causing not only our children to get sick, but it's increasing hospitalizations across the board? And which is the best candidate to deal with that? Don't get me wrong. I do think that Governor Newsom had some trouble dealing with COVID at the beginning. But when you look at the two candidates, you have to ask yourself, so which will be the best one to manage this pandemic as we go into another variant? Harmeet for Vice President Harris. This is, of course, taking place in her home state. Take a listen. They think if they can win in California, they can do this anywhere. Well, we will show them you're not going to get this done. Not here. Never. They don't defend this record. They talk about this being a Republican takeover uh, because they can't defend this record. So, Harmeet, what about Governor Newsom's record? Governor Newsom's record is absolutely abysmal. He's lied to Californians about the amount of effort that he is spending towards fire prevention. He cut the budget for Cal Fire by $120 million. He has had a terrible record. I've, I've personally had victories against him in court, including in the United States Supreme Court, over his unconstitutional COVID shutdowns. He's frolicking with his friends and lobbyists at the same time that he's telling other Californians to stay at home and not, uh, not be with other people. I think he's had a terrible record. And so, of course, Democrats are desperate to paint this as something other than a referendum on Gavin Newsom. There aren't two candidates on the ballot, contrary to what Richard just said. Question number one is a referendum on Gavin Newsom. Mm -hmm. Question number two is who should replace him. And we're not going to get unvaccinated, Richard, if our leadership changes in California. That's not how science works. The majority what? of Californians, the vast majority of Californians are vaccinated. So the issue here is what level of freedom we're going to have in this state. Are we going to continue to have literally in my city of San Francisco gangs of criminals roaming the streets in the nicest neighborhoods, breaking mm. into cars and knocking over people in broad daylight? Are we going to continue to have that in this state? Or do we deserve better? That's what this election is about. Uh, I think you're right, Harmeet. This election is about do we deserve better. And what you're seeing from the data is policies that are putting pl put in place by the mayor of San Francisco has allowed for the schools there to not have a high transmission of COVID-19, right, which is policies moving in the right direction. It's not about shutting down. It's about how do we ensure that we put mitigation processes in place in our school systems, which California is doing to make them safe the and equitable for open. all students. The schools, the schools aren't the schools open, in, Richard. In, the, the schools in L.A. and in San Francisco are open, Harmeet. I don't know they're, where, where they're, you are. They're not, they're not open the way they used to be. Mm. And there are hardly any there, there children are, in San so Francisco. Please so educate there, so yourself. So are there students, so there's not in-person learning in San Francisco and L.A.? Is that what you're saying? Barely. And for the last 18 What's months, barely? there was none. What's barely? It's not the regular it's not, is it, is it five days a week? <laughs> 
All right. It's not well, five days a week the same yes, way it, it was. Yes, it is. It is not the same it is. It way it was. Please educate yourself. Soon I we, am. I'm very educated. I'm telling you it's five days a week. Soon we will find out what California voters decide. Richard Harmeet, thanks so much for your time. Good to see you, Mike.